with another quick Azure Everyday video. And today I want to demonstrate how to test dynamic row level security in your Power BI desktop file. Now, if you haven't had a chance to see, I've done a previous video about how to set up dynamic row level security. Uh, go take a look at that. But at the end of that video, we end up with a nice rule for imparting that security in the file. And one of the cornerstones of this particular rule is the use of either the user principal name or username DAX measure. Now here at the top of this file, I've actually put each measure separately so you can see what's returned with it. And it's important to note that when we're in Power BI Desktop, these two measures return something different than when we're in Power BI Service. In the desktop, they return the domain of the user logged into this particular physical laptop. But in the service, they're actually going to both return the email address of the user that's logged in. And it's that email address that drives all of the security that goes through this file. Uh, so if we want to test this in Power BI desktop, we one need to recognize that this is taking place and under the modeling tab, when we come to view as, if I just click the role I want to test and I kick it off without any other inputs, it's not going to work. And the reason it's not working is because user principal name and username are not returning an email address. Right now, they're still returning this domain and user of this physical machine. So although I am logged into Power BI Desktop, this isn't the correct input. So we need to sort of customize the input of that by putting the email address that's powering the security of this file. So when I change my input to an email address here, I can see that it actually overrides these two measures uh, and forces that email address in. This is what the experience would be like if I logged into Power BI service. So right now we have a good indication that the security is working and I'm seeing in this case what I would expect to see. If I want to test another user, it's as simple as just changing the inputs here uh, and toggling that and we see the file adjust accordingly. It's also worth noting beyond just checking the visual display uh, to go into the table view and notice that the tables themselves are filtered down. Now, if you're clicking through your tables and you see a table that you expect it to be filtered, but isn't, for example, you can see here now the filters back out. Uh, if you see that, it's worth noting you should go back into your manage roles, uh, add additional filters will, where necessary so that your users aren't seeing more information than they're allowed to see or that you want them to see. So once you've got that in place and you've tested in the desktop file, there's a pretty good assurance then that when you move this to Power BI service, it's going to work as you intend. And the reason that I would recommend testing first in Power BI desktop is because in this format, this file is free of all other influences that might impact what that user can see. And those things are like workspace permissions, security memberships, or data set permissions. We're, we're not influenced by that right here. So the, at the end of the day, if it works here in Power BI Desktop, you can have a pretty good confidence that when you move it up to the service, it's, it's not the issue of the actual role in this file. There might be other influences that are impacting it but you can feel confident that you've got it in the right position to move forward. So I would always recommend testing first in Power BI Desktop before engaging in any testing in the service, just so you understand that it's working at its core, most granular level here in this file. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at testing dynamic role level security, and you'll join me again when we do the same exercise in the Power BI service. Thank you.